Hello again, everyone. Richmond and Thrive and Survive. It is now January 3rd, 2011, and this will be a short video. The last one went quite a bit longer than I thought, but I think it is really important. If you haven't seen part one, this is um, a series I'm doing on Ron Paul's reasoning for foreign policy. If you have any questions at all, any doubts about the foreign policy of the United States and Ron Paul's foreign policy, this series is an attempt to explain uh, why I believe Ron Paul's position is correct and uh, I know it's probably when we put it all together it's probably going to be an hour's worth of videos uh, and probably in three or four parts uh, I'm going to try to keep it to three uh, it is well worth watching in my opinion if you have any kind of doubts about the policy uh, any kind of little angst or whatever uh, it also shows hopefully um, the, the propaganda machine in the United States and the military industrial complex how strong it is um, but anyway that's what this series is put together for uh, this will probably be the shortest of the three series as I'm going to explain in this one something very simple and this is I'm going to explain the nuclear threat of Iran which everyone is talking about right now uh, in the media. Uh, one thing I do want to say is I was in the United States military for four years. I spent most of the time aboard the USS John F. Kennedy CV-67 which is uh, an aircraft carrier. Uh, it was recently uh, decommissioned a few years ago and scrapped um, but I was uh, stationed uh, quite a bit in the Middle East uh, mostly the Eastern Mediterranean. I was also in, uh, went through the the, uh, uh, the Suez uh, Canal uh, in Egypt and uh, went into uh, the Indian Ocean, uh, was in and around the Straits of Hormuz. So I am very familiar with the area and uh, you know the geopolitical risk and all the different things that are necessary uh, to protect that area. Uh, now one of the things they're saying right now is that uh, Iran is going is threatening to uh, close the Straits of Hormuz because we are talking about cutting off their oil supply. Uh, this is just total uh, BS. Uh, for one, it would be uh, if Iran uh, actually did this, it would be very short-lived. Uh, they could pull it off for maybe a couple days until we got there, just obliterated the little bit of navy they do have and uh, trust me when you're on, on the open water we have the fifth, fifth fleet uh, currently uh, in the Straits of Hormuz right now the, the fifth feet fleet by itself would totally obliterate any kind of threat that Iran would have there uh, with an, uh, a Navy uh, blockade. Uh, if we decided to block oil, they said they would uh, you know, stop all the oil coming out of the Straits of Hormuz and, uh, and you know, men going around the world. Uh, just isn't going to happen folks and the um, the National Defense Authorization Act, the one that uh, makes U.S. Uh, citizens uh, possibly terrorists and can be held forever, that's another story for another time, uh, that's got provisions in it that allows Obama not to uh, enforce any kind of action on Iran, any kind of sanctions like that, if it would cause a rise in oil prices uh, for the United States, which of course it would. So it's just a bunch of talk to try to position the United States for what they want to do when they want to do it. So it's that uh, cut and dried over there. Uh, so I do have some uh, personal history over there. So I'm not just speaking from total ignorance or speaking from uh, some sort of you know reading from a textbook and, and try to get this down. I was there. I know what it takes to do something like that. And I can tell you one aircraft carrier can take care of the Navy of Iran with no problem whatsoever and uh, in no time whatsoever as well. With, and putting nobody in harm's way on the United States uh, side as well. Uh, and this one I just want to show uh, the real threat of uh, I'm going to assume that uh, they do get a, a nuclear weapon in Iran. Uh, so a lot of this is going to be covered in other videos uh, which is another kind of bunk kind of thing about but let's just say they get a nuclear uh, warhead and uh, let's see what they can do with it. Now this map isn't very detailed. I'll probably have another map uh, later. We are talking about uh, Iran is actually uh, right in here on this map. This is the Straits of Hormuz and I know this can't be seen very much but uh, like I said, uh, another video I will get more specific and, and bigger probably with this uh, in the future uh, which will show this. Now what I've done is I've actually stretched this map a little bit this way just to, to make it bigger so you can see it. However, I left uh, the um, the scale of the map on the bottom. It's stretched exactly with it. I've marked a line on here which is roughly uh, 700 kilometers long. Uh, this little mark right here on the scale is 2,000 kilometers. This is zero here, 2,000 kilometers, and then up here would be 2,000 miles. Now the longest range missile that uh, the Iranians have is, uh, I believe it's 657 kilometers, uh, which is about, uh, I think, if, if 
my math is right, 400 and some, 430 maybe miles. I'll have to do, go check that. It could be the other way, but it's not really very far at all. And I've drawn this black line on here to represent how far that is. Remember, Iran is right here. Okay, this is the club. I'm, I'm, I'm picking the border that's closest to Israel, which is right over here on the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. Straits of Hormuz down here. This is where Iran would have to block off to keep oil from coming out. Uh, the sanctions on this bill would be to keep any Iranian oil from coming out. So they, that's that's their lifeline, their bloodline uh, of money coming into Iran. That would totally starve them and the people. Uh, go back and look at part one, the 30-some uh, minute video uh, that I do in this series explaining why we went to war in World War II, why that came about. And that will explain why uh, us cutting off oil to Iran would cause a war with Iran. And uh, one thing I should mention is that uh, what nobody's saying in the media is China has openly declared that if we uh, declare a war or have a war act, and a blockade is a war act, go back and look at that video I just did, on Iran, that China would defend Iran and come into uh, the picture. So we're talking about a complex geopolitical um, situation that would arise which would potentially take us to World War III pretty quickly. So China has already said they would defend their ally Iran if we did such a thing, uh, uh, an act of war, if we did bomb Iran. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind that nobody's talking about. So what I did was I took this, this the length of this line, which is, uh, I gave it a little bit extra, 700 kilometers, and what I did was then I, I used that as the diameter to make a circle, and I wanted to show you I'm going to select the circle and I'm going to place it on the map to show you if they if they actually did produce a nuclear warhead and put it on their longest range missile and I'm going to put it closest to us on the eastern border that's how far it would go and you know whatever direction they sent it this is the center line uh, you know that's as far as it could go it could reach Israel actually one bomb could remember Israel's got Probably, we don't know the exact number, I would say um, high single digits, uh, 75 to 100 nuclear warheads, possibly in the hundreds, uh, and Iran is trying to get, let's say, one, if that is even true. So if Iran were to launch one nuclear weapon and it would land somewhere in Israel, I'm not sure how accurate these missile systems they have, uh, I don't know what kind of uh, technology they have on it, doesn't really matter, let's just say they're extremely accurate. Um, yes, one would land in Israel, and then Israel could launch back, uh, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, right back in Iran. Political suicide and actual suicide for Iran to do that. Now, what I want you to notice on this map is, uh, here is the, <laughs> the United States, the closest coast. Uh, you can see how much of a threat this really is to the United States. Uh, going this way, of course, you can't see, but right on the edge of the map would be the west coast. Of the United. Actually, up here is Alaska, so maybe uh, Alaska might actually be closer. So you can see how close they can get to the United States with that warhead. Uh, which leaves one other thing, which is the Air Force of Iran. They could take this, like we could do also, they can put this warhead um, on one of their uh, aircraft in, in their uh, Air Force, and then of course they could, uh, they'd have to find re refueling stations, I guess, everywhere until they got here to the United States and de delivered that way. Um, there's only one problem with that scenario, and that scenario is um, the fact that Iran doesn't have an Air Force, so they can't do that either. So this is our threat, this is the big threat to the United States. Uh, that's all so chilling that we have to so worry about Iran getting a nuclear weapon. So uh, with that, we'll call this a, uh, a video on this. I just wanted to show real quickly uh, the absurdity of, you know, how dangerous, you know, I'm hearing tonight, the night before the, the Iowa caucuses, uh, how bad this is for Ron Paul because uh, the big threat that's going on right now in the Straits of Hormuz, and uh, believe me, folks, this has been coordinated to happen tonight. They don't want Ron Paul to win, and uh, I'm showing how ridiculous it actually is uh, to think that this scenario would actually happen. So I'll call this a video, and I'll come back with part three where I'll get into more detail on the exact geo political situation that's going on right now and why answer the question why were we attacked on 9-11 thanks guys bye